Hi everybody, my name is Aaron and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanna do something different. I wanna change it up a little bit. I wanna put out something a little more lighthearted and playful than the content I've been putting up recently. I wanna do a commentary on that crazy black turtleneck Scientology Tom Cruise video that uh, came out, well, I think it was originally recorded in 2004 if I recall correctly. And it's the one that was only intended to be broadcast to Scientologists. It was an internally produced video uh, that was played for an international Scientology event. So only Scientologists were supposed to see this thing, but it got leaked onto the internet. And that's when the world found out just how crazy Tom Cruise really is about Scientology. And in some respects, just how crazy Tom Cruise really is. Now, when this video originally came out, and when I say came out, I don't mean made it onto the internet. When this video was originally aired to Scientologists, I was still working in the Sea Organization at that time. I was still a full fledged hardcore believer in Scientology. I was a super fan of Tom Cruise. I thought this video was amazing. I was proud to be a Scientologist. I was proud Tom Cruise was a Scientologist. I was proud of how kick ass he was in this video. And um, only with uh, the distance that I now have from Scientology and hindsight being what it is, I look back on this video and it is pretty embarrassing. So let's just get into it and I'll just, I'm gonna provide commentary on this thing as we go. And not just commentary really, I wanna translate the video. Because in this video, he's talking to Scientologists. He's using a lot of Scientologies. To those not in Scientology, a lot of people watch this thing and they go, what in the hell is this guy even talking about? What does he mean? What does that mean when he says that? So I'm gonna provide some commentary, but also some translating. Pressing play. But if that's what Mr. Cruz has brought to this world, there still remains one more word on the man. Call it Tom Cruise on Tom Cruise Scientology. Okay, I, I gotta stop already. <laughs> I don't know who comes up. I don't know who writes these things. Actually, who usually writes these things is Dan Sherman, LRH's official biographer. That biography will never be made because nothing about L. Ron Hubbard's history that he ever claimed is actually true. However, Dan Sherman is L. Ron Hubbard's biographer and he has a habit of writing things that are complete gibberish. Tom Cruise on Tom Cruise Scientologist. What the f So Tom Cruise is on Tom Cruise or he's on Tom Cruise who is a Scientologist? Even though I've already seen this video, I actually had to listen to that line a few times before I quite realized, oh, Tom Cruise thoughts on Tom Cruise as a Scientologist. Anyway, just silly. Let's keep going. It's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist, and it's something that you have to earn. Mm. And because a Scientologist does, he or she has the ability to create new and better realities and improve conditions. Uh, being a Scientologist, you look at someone and you know absolutely that you can help them. So for me, it really is KSW and it's just like, it's... Okay, 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 I gotta stop because this is the one point everybody, um, everybody gets lost. KSW stands for Keeping Scientology Working. Keeping Scientology Working is the most important policy letter in Scientology. And how do we know that? Because it says it right in the policy letter. This is the most important policy letter in Scientology. Keeping Scientology Working is basically uh, something L. Ron Hubbard wrote where he sort of laid down the law that you're no longer allowed to be half-minded about being a Scientologist. Scientology is no longer something that you're allowed to say just makes people feel better or happier. You really have to sell Scientology and you can only, you're only allowed to sell or talk about Scientology by basically saying it is the most important thing that, that mankind, the most important, represents the most important opportunity mankind has ever had. Um, never allow someone to be namby-pamby about being a Scientologist. When someone signs up, consider they've enrolled for the duration of the universe. Yeah, we, win or die in the attempt. Uh, in, in this policy letter, L. Ron Hubbard says, we would rather have you dead than incapable. A lot of the things in the policy letter, he's talking about Scientology professional auditors. And he, he basically says, when you're training someone, you know, it's a tough world, only the tigers survive. And you have to have that attitude and that mindset when you're training auditors. And he goes on to basically say, and this is the attitude and the mindset we now have about all of Scientology. You're basically with us or you're against us. You're on board or you're not. And you'll see that this is reflected in basically everything else Tom Cruise says in this video. But I'll tell you again, uh, you're going to see the, the intensity that Tom has talking about KSW. It's like, that's not 
normal even for a Scientologist. All right, let's keep going. I don't mince words with that, you know, with, with anything that LRH does, but that policy to me has really gone, boy. And I, 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 there's a time I went through and said, you know what? What, Tom? When I read it, I, you know, I just went, Poof. Really? This is it. This is exactly it. This is exactly it. Okay, let's stop. The one thing that's strange about him acting like reading KSW was some huge watershed eye-opening moment for him is that it's literally the first policy letter in every single Scientology course a Scientologist will ever do, period. It's the first thing every Scientologist read in the beginning of every Scientology course. So like a Scientologist has read it a hundred times, a thousand times, and he's kind of acting like, oh my God, it's all about KSW. All right, let's keep going. Being a Scientologist, when you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. Mm. As you drive past, no? you know you have to do something you about do. it. Because what are you going to do, Tom? You know you're the only one that can really help. You're the help. only one that can really help. Okay, let's stop right there. Uh, when you drive by an accident, and he does mean just a normal car accident, you have to stop because you're the only one who can help. Well, maybe the, the medics, a firefighter, call an ambulance, Tom. Like, it's not all you. So... What he's really trying to say here is that, because it's sort of, what he says kind of forwards the impression, the, the misconception that a lot of people have that Scientologists don't believe in medicine or doctors or whatever. That's not actually true. But when Tom Cruise says only a Scientologist can help someone in a car accident, I don't know, it seems to me like that kind of uh, seems to resonate with that idea that like, what, a doctor can't do anything? So what he's talking about here is that even if, the even if a medic were to show up and let's say save the guy's life and then let's say the guy goes to the hospital and a surgeon fixes his leg or his arm or whatever does surgery there's still this idea that scientologists have that the true lingering effects that that person will suffer from are psychological or as uh, psychosomatic as the scientologist would say because they don't really believe in the the word psychological um but that the trauma and the lingering effects are psychosomatic and that only Dianetics auditing and Scientology auditing can alleviate the psychosomatic reason why this person's physical problems either aren't healing fast enough or maybe perhaps never heal. That's kind of what he's talking about. Now, what the hell that has to do with the Scientologist pulling over when they see a car accident? Um, See, those things aren't necessarily connected. See, so I just gave an explanation that didn't even necessarily explain this stupid ass comment. I have a feeling that this Tom Cruise interview video is horribly edited. Um, and I think as we move forward, that will become evident. Uh, you know, if a Scientologist were to pull over on a car accident, they would do something called either a locational or a touch assist. And a locational is just basically telling someone to look at things in the environment. Look at that tree, thank you. Look at that plant, thank you. Look at that car, thank you. Like literally, it's just a process that Scientologists believe gets a person's attention off of their body where it's stuck because they just had an accident or off of wherever it happens to be fixated and to help their attention more broadly be sweeping around the environment they believe that's more healthy spiritually that would be called a locational assist is what a scientologist would call that but again what that has to do with truly helping the person like i gotta tell you before tom cruise said this in this video, that's not something I would have actually ever expected a Scientologist to say. That's not a viewpoint I would have expected a Scientologist to have. Oh, as a Scientologist, I have to pull over because I'm the only one who can help. Like, I know Scientologists pride themselves on pulling over and helping people in car accidents, but I've never heard, other than Tom Cruise, say that the reason that's important is because literally only a Scientologist can help. Again, it's a, it's a really weird way of thinking, even for a Scientologist. All right, let's go. But that's... That's what drives me is that I know we have an opportunity and uh, to really help for the first time effectively change people's lives and uh, I am dedicated to that I'm gonna I'm absolutely uncompromisingly dedicated to that the orgs are there to help okay but we as you know, as also the public, it's like, we have a responsibility. It's not just the orgs. It's not just Dave Miscavige. You know, it's not just not just me. It's you. It's everyone out there kind of <laughs> rereading KSW and looking at what needs to be KSW. done and saying, okay, am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? Are you going to do it, Tom? Period. 
Come on. And am I going to look at that guy or am I too afraid? All right, let's I... stop it. Let's stop it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So the fact that Tom Cruise just said there, it's, it's a rereading KSW and it's deciding. Am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? Well, thanks, Tom. After this video was published, literally every single Scientologist in the entire world had to reread KSW multiple times and get checked out on it. And getting checked out on it is when two Scientologists partner up and they basically ask you a whole bunch of questions about what you just read to verify that you really, really got it. And first it starts out by asking you the definitions of words. So literally I'm talking about saying things like, what is the definition of the word as? And if you don't give me the right definition of the word as, without hesitating too long, you get a flunk and you have to go back. Well, first of all, you have to go look up all the definitions of the word as. And then you have to go reread the entire policy letter, which um, KSW is a long policy letter. It's not short. And they have to get checked out on it again. And Miscavige basically decided that Tom Cruise literally was the most dedicated Scientologist in the entire world. And he put out this video so all Scientologists could see that Tom Cruise's dedication came from truly understanding the KSW policy letter. And in order to be more like Tom Cruise, you just had to understand KSW as well as Tom Cruise understands KSW. So anyway, everyone had to go literally Sea Org members, staff members, public Scientologists basically got a lecture from Tom Cruise about how they all weren't quite doing enough. And uh, yeah, this is how this is how Tom Cruise officially became the poster boy for all of Scientology. This was like his debutante ball. And this is uh, him, him receiving this medal. This this video is him receiving the IAS Freedom Medal of Valor. Uh, he's the only person to ever receive that particular award. But this was like officially his introduction to all Scientologists as the new it man. Now, I know it might sound weird to say it's an, it, his introduction because he'd been in Scientology for well over 20 years at this point. But never very publicly. Like Tom Cruise never addressed the body of Scientologists before. This was the first time Tom was actually addressing all Scientologists uh, from the stage of an international event. And this video was played and then Tom came out on stage and he addressed all the Scientologists and da 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 da. So, all right, let's keep going. And am I gonna look at that guy or am I too afraid because I have my own out ethics to put in someone else's ethics? And that's all it comes down to. Because I won't hesitate to put ethics in on someone else. Won't hesitate. Because I put it ruthlessly in on myself. I don't wanna know what that looks like. And I think that, uh, I respect that mm. in, in others mm -hmm. and uh, you know I'm there to help and we're here to help and my opinion is is that look you're either on board or you're not on board mm -hmm. okay but just if you're on board you're on board just like the rest of us <laughs> the guys an idiot. Idiot. if you're on board you're on board if you're not on board you're not on board but if you're on board be on board and if you're not on board get off board <laughs> I mean this is the best they could come up with. All right, let's keep going. We are the authorities on getting people off drugs. We, we are the authorities. The on authority? the are you sure? We are the authorities on improving conditions. Authorities on improving conditions. Criminon. We can rehabilitate criminals. Uh, rehabilitate. Way to happiness. We can bring peace uh, uh, and unite cultures. Uh, that. What else, Tom? Once you know these tools and you know that they work, it's uh, yeah. it's not good enough. That, that I'm just doing okay. No. Traveling the world and meeting the people okay. that, I, that I've met. This is rough. You know, this is talking bad. with these leaders in various fields. All these leaders, okay. They want help. They do, from Tom Cruise. And they are depending on people. They are. Who know and who can be effective mm -hmm. and do it. And that's us. That's us. I mean, can you imagine Tom Cruise meeting the president of France and the president of France says to him, Tom, I hear you're a Scientologist. I hear you've got solutions. I'm looking to you, Tom, for help. It's so absurd. It's so absurd. I mean, I'm embarrassed I'd ever thought this video was amazing. All right, let's keep going. That's us. That is our responsibility our to responsibility. do that. It is the time now. Now is the time, okay? Oh, it is being a Scientologist, people are turning to you, so you are better they, know it. You better know it. And if you don't, oh, no. you know, go and oh. learn it. <laughs> you know? Why would but they be turning to you? Pretend you, you know it know. And, 
or for, you know whatever it's like, oh my you're, god you're guys this guy's a fucking idiot they're turning to you so you better know it and if you don't know it go find out but don't say you know it and not know it this is what tom cruise has become you know we hear great things from the people who work with him we hear that he's uh, his work ethic is uh, bar none we hear about what a great guy he is but Scientology has turned this guy's brain to mush. Look at interviews from him early on in his career. He's humble, he's quiet, he's self-deprecating, he's thoughtful. And then you look at his interviews now, he's manic, his thoughts are disjointed, he doesn't seem to finish sentences, he kind of talks in circles sometimes, like, I don't know what it is, man. Again, I don't, it's, it's this weird transformation that we've seen in Tom Cruise where he's become this manic version of himself and this really poorly spoken version of himself. That's not something I'm used to seeing happen to people as they move through Scientology. Uh, uh, usually people move through Scientology, they sort of kind of uh, adopt a, a similar persona. Um, in some respects, everyone's trying to be like L. Ron Hubbard, but in other respects, everyone's trying to be like David Miscavige. I mean, most people today have no concept of who or what L. Ron Hubbard really was. I mean, he died in 86. Most Scientologists today don't really have L. Ron Hubbard to act like, but they do have David Miscavige. And um, I, I do actually genuinely think that some of the personality traits we're seeing in Tom Cruise is more a reflection of him becoming more and more and more like David Miscavige. And when I say I haven't seen that happen in other Scientologists, no other Scientologists are as close to David Miscavige as Tom Cruise is. No other Scientologists and hardly any other Sea Org members, especially any of the Sea Org members that I would have known, um, had any remote actual real relationship with David Miscavige. And yet Tom is David Miscavige's best friend. Did you guys know David Miscavige was the best man at um, not only uh, Katie Holmes's, uh, uh, Tom's marriage to Katie Holmes, but also to Nicole Kidman? I think this weird transformation we've seen in Tom is Tom becoming more and more like David Miscavige. So, all right, let's keep going. Whatever, it's like we're here to help. I mean, if you're a Scientologist, you see life, you see things the way they are. You do? How are they? In all its glory, you know? All of its complexity. I thought it was supposed uh, to be simple, not And the more you know as a Scientologist, you don't become overwhelmed by it. <laughs> oh, this is the worst. And, uh, Go ahead, Tom. What do you think? Tell us. They said, so. Have you met an SP? <laughs> well, did you, Tom? Have you met an SP? <laughs> I looked at them. I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, they left this. And I thought, oh, what a beautiful thing, that. because maybe one day it'll be like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Maybe one All day. All exterminated, Tom? <laughs> yeah. Wow, SPs, like, they'll just read about those in the history books, you know? <laughs> Will they? All right, I got a comment on the SP thing. As you're studying Scientology and you learn about SPs, suppressive persons, and the uh, corresponding label, which is PTS, potential trouble source. Someone who's PTS is someone that's connected to an SP. There's many other ways in Scientology you can be PTS, but you know, maybe that's part of the complexity Tom is talking about. When L. Ron Hubbard talks about uh, who the SPs in history are, he really does talk about the Hitlers. He mentions Dillinger. He mentions Stalin. And when Scientologists are talking about SPs, they do try to get people to understand that they're talking about truly evil people like Hitler or Stalin or Mao or was Dillinger a bank robber? I don't, I don't even remember. But there's sort of a big catch in everything Hubbard says about what a suppressive person is. He gives you big examples like Hitler, Stalin, Mao. And in the fine print, it's basically like, and also anybody who doesn't really follow our rules. <laughs> so I can imagine someone having a superficial understanding of what suppressive person means and actually asking Tom. So, I mean, have you ever met someone that you thought was like a Hitler? And Tom's like, oh, you silly peasant. Maybe one day there will be no SPs. I just, these are such weird things for them to have left in this video. Like, they make him look silly. I wonder what Tom thought about this video. All right, let's keep going. And it's it literally, it's, it's not how to run from an SP. It's PTSD, SP, how to shatter suppression, confront shatter suppression. You apply it, it's like, boom. Because they don't come up to me and do that. Uh, they don't do it to me. They don't, Tom? Not to my Never? face. You know, Are you sure? Anywhere in my 
vicinity. No? Where they feel they can be. Really? Confronting, you know. It's not doing Those big bad SPs won't do or say anything to Tom in front of him or in his vicinity where they know they will be confronted. I can think of a couple exceptions. How about this one? <laughs> now why would you do that? Why would you do that? And how about this one? Would you also agree though, Tom, that there's a perception out there, cult-like secrecy controlling, and, and you almost have to defend it? Ignorance breeds bigotry. Do you feel discriminated against when people say, this is what Scientology is, that you're a bunch on a lunatic fringe or whatever? Peter? Tom? No one's ever said that to me. But no, I mean that perception out there. I guess those SPs didn't get the memo not to do anything in the vicinity of Tom Cruise where they can be confronted. All right, let's keep going. Look, I wish the world was a different place. I'd like to go on vacation and go. Does Tom not go on vacation? Play and just. He likes to romp. Okay. Do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, Tom. I mean, that's what I want it to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how I would, you know, there's times I'd like to do that, but. You would, okay. But I can't. Spit it out. Because I know. You know what? I know. So. You know what? Okay, I gotta pause, I gotta pause it. I have never met a Scientologist, known a Scientologist who says things like, the weight, the burden, of humanity is on my shoulders because I know the truth of Scientology. I can't let one day go by where I don't get as many people into Scientology as I possibly could. I want to romp. I'd like to romp in vacation, but I can't. I wish the world were that way. Like this is some batshit crazy stuff, even for a Scientologist. All right, here we go. I, you know, what you know, you just, you, I, I have to do something about it. It's not, mm important you know you can sit here and wish it was different and then you look at it and you go okay this is it all right okay and there's that moment where you go mm, what a weirdo. you know i have to do something don't i yeah i really have to do it because i can't do it myself if i don't and it's and that really is it i don't care if someone thinks it's hard or easy it's either either helping and contributing everything you can or you're not do you think Tom okay. contributes everything he can? Uh, because I he I'm does, carrying honestly. my load. All right. And only that, carrying something. as much as I'm carrying, I still feel like I got to do more. All right. There's still a thing of, let's go. You can just see the look in their eyes. You know the ones that are doing, you know, and you know the spectators who are the ones that are going, oh, well, spectators is actually a what am I doing? Dirty it's just that thing is, uh, I've canceled that in my area. Mm. <laughs> no spectators. <laughs> It's like, man, you're either in or you're out. That's spectatorism, and it's something that, that is, we have no time for it now. So it's our responsibility to okay, no spectators educate, guys. create the new reality. You know, we create have that responsibility to say, hey, this is the way it should be done, because we do it this Stupid. way, and people well, are actually getting better. And let's get it done. He speaks in such generalities that it's. It, no one really knows what the hell he's talking about. Like even a Scientologist can probably come up with an idea of what they think he's talking about. But like create the new reality. All right, so what? The new reality where everyone's a Scientologist? Sure, that kind of matches up with the aims of Scientology. Uh, uh, the aims of Scientology are like a world without criminality, without insanity, without war, where the able can prosper and honest beings have rights. I think I'm, I might've forgotten something. But like, what the hell does that have to do with Tom Cruise? Like, there's one thing here that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, Scientologists are usually preoccupied with doing Scientology. That means getting up Scientology's bridge to total freedom, is what they call it. And there's courses to do, to learn how to be an auditor. And then there's the other side of it, which is getting all of the auditing that there is to do in Scientology. And that is what is meant by doing Scientology. That is what is meant by going up the bridge. Scientology organizations have a responsibility to introduce new people into Scientology. There are smaller versions of orgs called missions that have a responsibility to bring people into Scientology. And yes, every Scientologist is told that, you know, they're basically being counted on to introduce people into Scientology. But it's not like it's something Scientologists are overly preoccupied with. I mean, there are some people that are full-time 
Their full-time job is to introduce people to Scientology and they actually make good money doing it. Those people are called field staff members or FSMs. And those guys, their business, their, their living, the way they make money is to bring people into Scientology. Your average public Scientologist is not overly preoccupied with doing that. It's why it doesn't really make sense to hear Tom Cruise go on and on and on and on. You're either on board or you're not. You're either in the game or you're, you're either on the field or you're out of the stadium. There's no spectators. But you know what? Scientology is supposed to allow for people to just do Scientology. You don't have to be a staff member. You don't have to be a CIRG member. You don't have to be a professional FSM. It is okay to be a Scientologist and just pay your money and do Scientology. I guess the new reality of David Miscavige is going for is no, that's not okay. That's not acceptable. You're not allowed to just be a Scientologist. You have to be like Tom Cruise. You have to be putting it all out there, putting it all on the line, putting your reputation at stake to introduce Scientology to as much people as possible. And that's not how most Scientologists act or behave or anything, even after, uh, even in the post Tom Cruise Scientology era that we're in now. But I think that's the version of Scientology David Miscavige would like to exist. And that's probably an overreaction to the fact that no one's fucking getting into Scientology. No one joins Scientology these days. The people that join Scientology mostly come in through um, the wise business consulting route. And you can just Google WISE. WISE stands for World Institute of Scientology Enterprises. There's tons of business consulting firms that specialize in dentists and chiropractors and physical therapists and financial planners and veterinarians. Um, basically medical professionals who are in private practice for themselves and, and just professionals in general who are in practice for themselves but don't have some sort of business degree. Uh, they're particularly susceptible to becoming clients of these business consulting firms and these firms exist to get people into Scientology. That's where most people who get into Scientology come from. Other than that, nobody's joining Scientology. So Miscavige overreacts by wanting everybody in Scientology to be professional FSMs, and he dangles Tom Cruise out there being like, look, Tom's doing it. If he's doing it and you're not doing it, then fuck you. You're a piece of shit. Be like Tom Cruise. That's essentially what Scientology has become, is Miscavige telling everybody to be like Tom Cruise. All right, let's keep going. Let's really get it done and have enough love, compassion, and toughness that, that you're going to do it. Uh, and uh, do it Catch your theme right. song. And I have to tell you something. I really, it, it is... Tell me, Tom. You know, it's yes, rough Tom. and tumble. Oh, rough and tumble. And it's mm. wild and woolly. And it's wild and woolly. Jesus. It's a blast. Mm. It really is fun. Fun. Because damn it, there's nothing better than to going out there and fighting a fight and suddenly you see fighting a fight. fight. What? I want to know that I've done everything fighting. I could uh, fighting every day. Matt Lauer. And I think about those people out there who are depending on us. Who's depending on you, Tom? And, uh, Brooke Shields ain't depending on you. Katie Holmes ain't depending on you. And it does make me feel uh, like, man, I got this. You know, we got more work. Spit it out, more help. Jesus. You know, get those spectators either in the playing field or out of the arena. You know, <laughs> that's how I really. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> Chuckles. I do what I can, and I do it the way I do everything, <laughs> which is from five feet off the floor. There's nothing <laughs> part of the way. Like five feet <laughs> yeah, that's kind of Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise on Tom Cruise. A Scientologist can be defined by a single question. What's the question? Would you want others to achieve the knowledge you now have? Mm, of course. In answering that question, Tom Cruise has introduced LOH technology to over oh. one billion people of Earth. One and that's billion. only the first wave he's unleashed. Which is why the story of Tom Cruise, Scientologist, has only just begun. Okay, only just begun. You know, it's interesting. All right, that's interesting. So, the story of Tom Cruise, Scientologist, has only just begun. You know, it's funny. We don't hear Tom Cruise talking about Scientology that much anymore. I think the blowback for him professionally was too great for him to keep doing it. And, I mean, do his movies still make money? Sure. Is he still one of the top movie stars in Hollywood? Sure. But is he the number one star in Hollywood? No. And he was for at least 10 years. And I believe The Rock has surpassed him. 
I think perhaps Will Smith has surpassed him. And, you know, I'm, I'm not knocking him professionally. As an actor, as a businessman, as a producer, the guy's still monstrously successful. But you'll notice he sure isn't talking about Scientology that much anymore, is he? And the silliness of them saying Tom Cruise has introduced Scientology technology to over a billion people. Then I guess Scientology isn't very sticky because there are at most 35,000 Scientologists in the entire world. I have a video on this channel. The title is something like proof of less than 35,000 Scientologists in the world. And I actually show my work um, showing clearly by continent, by organizational type within Scientology, how there is absolutely how it is absolutely impossible for there to be any more than 35,000 Scientologists in the entire world. Well, Tom Cruise has personally introduced over a billion people to Scientology. So the retention rate of Scientology leaves uh, a little something to be desired. All right, well, that's all I have on this for now. I hope I can edit this together in a way that actually makes some sense. So for all of you who've made it to the end of this video, I actually wanna take the opportunity to call your attention to the last video that I uploaded. It's on a sensitive subject, so I won't say the title, but I'll show an image of it right here. And, um, you know, I'm calling attention to it because videos on sensitive subjects like that tend to get suppressed by YouTube. And that particular video, even though it's one of the more important videos I've ever, I've ever put on this channel, got significantly less views than my videos normally have been getting. So I'm assuming that due to the sensitive nature of the video, it didn't get pushed out and recommended like YouTube has been recommending the other videos. And yet I do want that particular message to get out to as many people as possible, not just in Clearwater, Florida, not just in cities where there are churches of Scientology, but to as many people as possible, particularly people connected to legislators, as many legislators as possible, people connected to law enforcement, people connected to the FBI. It's actually a very important subject, obviously. And anything you can do to help me get the message in that video out to as many people as possible is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, guys. That's all I got for now. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, can't keep on my love. Then you could click right in right here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!